So I'm quickly taking it over again. Recent information on the earnings per share and share price of PAPO is as follows. So from 2011 to 2014, we are giving the earnings per share 64, 68, 70, 62. Then we are giving the end year share prices in dollars 9.15, 9.88, 10.49, and then 10.90. Paco currently has the following long term capital. So they have ordinary shares, they have reserves there, and then they have non current liability, bank loan, and then the issue there. Now let's go there. It says that the 8% loan notes are convertible into 8 ordinary shares in 7 years' time. So listen. The company has a debt instrument, but it is what? A convertible debt. So this convertible debt can be converted into what? Eight shares per hundred dollar bond. The loan note, if not converted, the loan can be redeemed on the future date at their nominal value of it, as a hundred. So you either convert to eight shares or you take your money at the nominal value, which is hundred dollars. I want you to stay with me here. This was what I illustrated down here about you converting or taking the money. Next, the ordinary shares of Paco have a nominal value of one dollar per share and have been traded on a large exchange for many years. Listed companies similar to Paco have been recently reported to have an average P-E ratio of 12 times. Now, listen carefully here. Listen carefully. Paco Limited, it means it is also listed, isn't it? Because we have told that its shares have been what? Traded on a large stock exchange market. So Paco themselves, they are also listed. But we are giving industrial average of 12 times. Times. What is the requirement? Calculate the market price of the convertible loan note of PAPO, commenting on whether conversion is likely. So what do we do? How did we say we calculate the value of redeemable debt? Where is it? I didn't talk about that. <laughs> Paco has a cost of debt of 9% per year. Yeah, that is important. How did we say we calculate the value of convertible debt? What's the formula? Calculation of market value of convertible debt. What did we say was the formula? Oh, we just wrote it down. Uh -huh. So redeemable. This is a redeemable debt. Present value. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Present value of what? Can you, can you imagine? Oh, it's 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 gone missing. Missing. <laughs> this has gone missing. What we just you remembered, right? Give me a thumbs up. You remember. Put it in the comment box. You remember. <laughs> so <laughs> what did we say? Market value equals what? Present value of a interest plus what? The red redemption value. Okay. Now, what is the first thing we do? Usually, we're going to put our year here, we put cash flow here, we put a discount factor here, and we put the present value here. Follow me carefully. The discount factor, what will be the discount factor that we're going to use here? The company's cost of debt is what we will use here as what? Well, the discount factor. Remember, when we were doing IRR, we did a trial and error. But a higher net trial and error at Jumebia, we use the company's cost of capital of what? 9%. Then, the loan will be redeemed when? In seven years. So, year one to year seven, interest. Are we having tax in the question? No. So what will be the interest? Interest will be 8% times 100. What do we have? 8. Go and read 
this annuity table for me, please? You remember that, right? 9% annuity. I told you that. Then. What is what is the convertible loan note? What is the coupon rate? The coupon rate is 8. The 9% is the company's cost of capital. So you use the company's cost of capital as the discount rate. Then you use the coupon rate for the interest. So what is the 9% discount factor saving period? 5.0. 033. Then, on the 7th year, there should be redemption. But the question is, what redemption value do we bring in? Please follow me carefully. We are told that at the 7th year, they can either redeem at the nominal value of how much? $100. Or they can convert it into shares. So this is the question we ask ourselves. We need to calculate the share price in seven years time. How do we calculate the share price in seven years time? So market share price in seven years will be equal to the current share price into bracket 1 plus G bracket uh, close exponent N. The G here simply means the growth in the share price. Listen carefully. And when I finish, you ask intelligent questions. Share price in seven years time equals A by current share price times 1 plus D exponent N. The N is the number of years, and so the N will be what? 7. Got it? N will be 7. I'll come back to that. Now, how do we calculate growth in the share price? I told you that growth should be equal to square root of N final over initial minus 1. Do you remember this? So, we are calculating the growth in the share price. How many years do we have for the share price this year? How many years? How many years? Four. Four years. So we will use what? The end we will use what? Eh? Four. Three. <laughs> Make sure I will say, this is what I want you to understand. It is four, but when we are calculating growth, it will be from 2012 2011 to 2012, that is 1. 2012 to 2013, 2. 2013 to 2014, 3. So it will be 3. Then what is the final share price? 10.90 over the initial share price, 9.15 minus 1. Can you punch this time, same thing? What do I have? Six percent. Is it confirmed? Why do you need to bring your calculator? Six percent. Six percent. Okay. Now, so if we now calculate the growth in the share price, then now we can calculate the share price in seven years time. So share price in seven years will be equal to the current share price. What is the current share price? 10.90 into bracket 1 plus 6%. So it will be 1 point what? 06 exponent 7. Can I have an answer? Sixteen point 
four. Now, why are we calculating the share price in seven years' time? Because the question said, at the seventh year, they can do two things. One, they can either convert it into what? Shares, or they can what? Take their money. If they are converting it into shares, they will get how many shares per hundred dollar bond? Eight shares, isn't it? Eight. So value of shares will be equal to 16.4 times 8. What do I have? One, three. One, three. Now, if you were the bondholder, will you take the hundred dollars or you will convert? Simple. You said? Simple, Simple which is? <laughs> Take the hundred dollars. No. <laughs> Convert, isn't it? So this becomes the value on redemption. So that is what I want you to understand. 131.2. So assuming this was more than this, then this will become the value on redemption. And we'll read this on the present value table. So 9% present value, the seventh year. 0.54. Seven. So let's multiply up to get a present value. Seven point two six, and then seventy-one point seven six. Total that becomes market value. or market price of a convertible bond. One, two, three, three. One, oh. one, one, two. One, one, two. That is the answer to the question. Amy. Is it? So how can we two six? And so it can be zero three. Uh, I'm not okay. one boy because I'm not having a calculator. No, you're people. You're people. Last week. 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 Yeah, that is the A. Yes. The voucher to a CA, yeah, it is our question. So, yes, well, I am supposed to. So, all the I, will to the I told you that the value of the entity, yes, you can use the industry, equals what? The earnings per share times the PE ratio. And I told you that if it is for unlisted entity, the P-E ratio comes from what? The industrial average. Now, this is a listed company. If it is a listed company, then in valuing it using P-E ratio, we have to calculate the P-E ratio for the company. But we can as well use the industrial average to place a value on the company using the current earnings per share. So 0.62 times the, P, the industrial average of 12. What do I have? What do I have? 7.44. 7. So this is the value per share using the industrial average. But is this a good measure? It is not a good measure because this company under consideration, Paco, is listed. If it is listed, then we have to calculate a range of values for Paco Limited. How do we do that? We do that by following what they have here. So we are going to just copy the year, 20, and I want you to stay with me here, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. You are calculating price earnings ratio for only 2014, but that cannot be a benchmark. You have to do for all the years, because we have to calculate range of values. So earnings per share, which is in cents, 
is 64, and then what? Give me the values, please. 68. 68. 70. 62. Then we are also giving the share price, which is in what? Dollars. How much? 9.15. 9.88. 10.49, 10.90. Then, based on this, we can calculate the PE ratio. You remember what we said was the PE ratio? Earnings per share over what? Sorry. Price over earnings per share, isn't it? So this divided by this to give us the price earnings ratio. So 2 over 1. What do we have? Now, note that when you are punching, this is 64 cents. So when you are punching, you have to punch it uh, 9.15 over 0 0.1. 64. What do I have? 14.3. Next one. So, meaning that if you should use the value then, you know, you see that the value is bigger than the industrial average PE ratio. So, this is the answer to the question. Meaning that you don't use the industrial average when the company itself is already what? Listed. And if you check clearly, you realize that these answers are the same as what has been provided already. But they say, we get, next time, and I say, why yet? And that is the thing about it. So that is the answer to the question. Using a PE ratio to value a company. She, she, she. Listen, Food Limited has an issue 12% bonds with a nominal value of 50,000 Ghana cities and redeemable value of 165,000. So what is the 12% for? What is the 12% for? The coupon rate, isn't it? Right. With interest payable quarterly. The cost of debt on the bond is 8% annually and 4% quarterly. Sorry, 2% quarterly. The bonds are redeemable on 30th June 2021 and it is now 31st December 2017. So if we are in 31st this 2017, it means 2017 is gone. Yes. So 2018, 2019, 2020, 2020 yes. 2021, no, I'll say 30th June. When is 30th June? Ah, so this is going to be three months. And if it is going to be three months, <clears throat> this is going to be three years. How many months are in a year? 12, 3, plus 6. <laughs> so the life of the bond 
is 42 months. Now, why did I do months? Because the examiner is saying that interest is payable ebase, quarterly. So, I am going to find out how many quarters are in 42 months. How many quarters are in 42 months? How many months makes a quarter? So, 42 divided by 3. 14. So there are 14 quarters here. So if there are 14 quarters, what do I do? Simple. Here. Cash flows. Discount factor. Present value. What do we use as the discount factor? Liar. The 12%. The 12% is the number of cash That is the interest. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to do quarterly. Same thing I like calculated the number of quarters. Uh, so we use the two percent as what? Well, the discount factor. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Then the coupon rate will be the interest. So now the coupon rate is also twelve. So if we are dealing with quarterly, then we have to get a coupon rate per quarter, isn't it? So coupon rate per quarter will be what? Twelve percent over four, and that will give us three percent. So interest from 1 to 14 will be 3% times what? 3% times what? What is the nominal value of the loan? 150,000 Ghana cities. Can I have an answer? I hope nobody is missing. Yeah? Is that you are missing? Four thousand five hundred. So the interest is going to be four thousand five hundred. Then on the fourteenth, it will be redeemed. And what is the redemption value? One six five thousand. So you read this on annuity. So go to annuity table two percent the fourteenth period. One zero six. Zero six. Present value two percent. Twelve fourteen period. Zero point seven five eight. Can I have answers, please? Understand the question. That is the solution. Then that is the solution. Six months. <laughs> Whether you can write it. 